Ja, ja. Ja, ja. So, where do you wish to join civil service? Um, sir, in civil services, I know that I will get the opportunity to contribute my ambition towards nation building, as well as it's a very good career opportunity since you have in my life. Right. And uh, what qualities do you possess which will make you a good civil servant? Uh, so, firstly, I believe I have a single-minded focus towards my work that helps to increase my commitment. Second, I believe uh, I'm a woman of principles when it comes to my integrity and my honesty. Uh, they are the least compromise. Thirdly, I believe I have a discipline as a civil servant and time management skills which enhance my commitment and passion towards my job. Excellent. I'm sure there are a few more qualities required for these jobs. These are leadership positions. First is your faith in rule of law. Yes. You have to abide by the rule of law. Second is you are required to have moral courage, that is, courage to say and do the right thing. Yes. And thirdly, you don't flinch <coughs> from handling crisis. You readily handle crisis. Because every day, practically, you get crisis in the city, in the districts. Certainly. So these are some qualities which you should always remember. <coughs> And uh, is this your first attempt? So this is my third attempt. This is your third attempt. Yes. Now, uh, I see from your biodata that you have done public administration. Yes. So I'll ask you a few questions on uh, constitutional matters. Okay. Where is the philosophy of the constitution? Where does it reside, the philosophy of the Indian constitution? So primarily the preamble of the constitution embodies the philosophy of it. Quite right. It contains a word called socialist. Yes. Now, is it the same as socialism? No, sir. Or it has a different meaning for in Indian context? So the Indian context is a little different from socialism, entailing that we have a mixed economy where the state does play a primary role, but there is a, a free and fair environment even for the private sector. So it becomes a mixed economy. So, you are trying to say that this word socialist connotes, it has economic meaning. So, mixed economic no, meaning. It doesn't have economic meaning. So, it entails regarding the state's presence because the means of production in... Uh, that is socialism. That is yes. the, when the government controls the means of production and distribution, that is called socialism. Yes. That is a definition. Yes. But here, socialist means social and economic justice. Remember this. Okay. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with the economy here. So the state takes a primary role of welfare, which is social exactly, and economic justice, exactly, but the exactly. private sector is equal to that. Is right, that is right. So different from socialism. This is actually a, a concept of welfare state. Yes. Not of socialism as you defined. Now, you have. Uh, mm, must have heard of the, read about the Keshwan and Bharti case and the basic structure concept. Yes. Now, near three most important or most salient features of the constitution, which are basic features which cannot be changed. Name the important one, not the unimportant ones. Basic features which cannot be altered. So first, uh, I, I might say that it's a democracy uh, feature of the constitution itself. It's a democratic uh, institution uh, of the state. Second, I would say um, it's the secular nature of the state, which is most important. And third, I would say separation of powers between the three uh, institutions of the law. Separation of power is correct. Supposing I still told you that the most important thing is the federal structure, that which is. cannot be touched. Second is the independence <coughs> of judicial and third is separation. I would put it in that order. Uh, I will continue with this public administration. Right. What is the concept of good governance? So, governance is uh, the act of governing, and good governance means when the act of governance involves principles of transparency, accountability, rule of law, citizen participation, that it becomes more inclusive in nature. Okay. Now, just on mentioning of 
federalism, right? How federalism works in India? What is your assessment? Uh, sir, uh, India has separate state governments and central governments. That's a basic feature that we have, is uh, that we have a separate uh, state government first. Secondly, we have divided the functions of the central and the state governments into separate lists, which has... Um, Over a period of time, what kind of changes have come? So there have been some deletions in the state list and additions in the concurrent as well as the central list that have happened over the period of time. And uh, apart from that, uh, there are changes like um, GSC Council, which was very recent, that uh, provide for pool sovereignty between uh, the states and the center. Do you think that the financial position of the states are being strengthened? Certainly, sir. With the recent uh, uh, GSC Council formation, where states have been given uh, equal powers when it comes to... Uh, Any other indication of that strengthening of the financial position of the states? Uh, so the 14th Finance Commission, uh, it increased the devolution of funds from the centre to the states, increase it from 32 to 42 percent. So that is one thing. What is this concept of cooperative federalism? Uh, so cooperative federalism is uh, when the states cooperate amongst themselves as well as with the centre for a common national objective. So that uh, becomes uh, more like inclusive governance again, where they are cooperating to achieve. And how does it work? What is the institutional mechanism for that? So it's the interstate council is one mechanism. There are zonal councils as well, and uh, these are some of the methods. <coughs> In the budget this year, the interim budget, yes. uh, for the agricultural sector, one landmark scheme was introduced, right? So I beg your pardon. One important scheme was introduced for the agriculture sector. Yes. Sir. What is your take on that? So the particular scheme is uh, Kisan. Uh, Pradhan Mantri Kisan uh, scheme, Samman Nidhi scheme and uh, it aims to provide direct income support to farmers. So in the sense of providing them an investment support and also a choice to what to grow, it's a good scheme in that sense and it will uh, help in boosting agricultural productivity. However, certain concerns need to be addressed with it because it, uh, it concerns itself only with land holding farmers. And also, its penetration needs to be addressed with time. the implementation of the scheme. Also, we have put to create some other difficulties. What kind of difficulties are being encountered? So, the first implementation hurdle would be to identify the farmers, given the land records in India are not that nice, uh, they're not very nicely maintained. So, that would be the first hurdle that we would face. The second hurdle would be that there is no cap regarding how much investment support needs to be given. Because Many of the state governments have gone in for drone waivers. Yes. Agricultural loans. Yes. What is your take on that? Uh, so, loan waivers are uh, an instrument that helps in providing uh, short term relief to farmers who are dealing under debts. So, in that sense, uh, it becomes important to give farm loan waivers up to a certain extent. However, given the fiscal indiscipline and the moral hazard that it entails, farm loan waivers need to be uh, few. They need to be uh, not many instances. Okay, of last question. UN Security Council, uh, the present situation between India and Pakistan, it went to the Security Council. Yes. What transpired? What happened in that? Uh, so, the committee on uh, ISIL and uh, Al Qaeda uh, was set up. Uh, there was a resolution that was moved by United States, United Kingdom, what and was France. Resolution number? Uh, so it's one two six seven. One two six seven. Yeah. So what? Happened? The resolution was moved to enlist Masood Hazar in a, as a terrorist and freeze his funds and activities. However, China has uh, put a hold uh, on the resolution. What is the implication of put on hold? So till September, uh, there is a temporary hold uh, that uh, uh, the particular terrorist, his funds mm -hmm. and his activities, there will be no impact on it. But till September, there is a second review which uh, either China can veto or agree to. Okay, thank you. Minan, you are a student of public administration. Yes. What, according to you, would be the four main principles of public administration? Uh, sir, uh, four main principles, according to me, the first should be rule of law, because uh, the public administrators need to abide by it. The second, according to me, should be inclusive approach because the public administration cannot function as a top-down structure. Third, according to me, should be transparency, because right. uh, corruption is an issue that public administration sure. is facing. 
and fourth according to me should be accountability and responsibility because uh, to assess the needs of the people and to react to them is also very important. Excellent. You probably left out one, efficiency in delivery of services because that's quite important. Now I find from your CV that you are interested in women's issues, you have done research and uh, you love reading feminist thought and discourses. Now can you name some of the legislations which safeguards women's rights in India? Yeah. So the first I would say is the Dawi Prohibition Act. Yes. The second is Domestic Violence Act. Yeah. The third is Sexual Harassment and Workplace Act. The fourth is also the Criminal Law Act which uh, addresses the issue of rape. Um, and apart from that, uh, I cannot recall more. There's the Indecent Representation of Women Act, which is uh, 1986. Okay. Now, talking about women's rights, the Supreme Court, in its judgment on uh, the Sabarimala case, upheld yes. one of the constitutional principles. Can you name that principle? Uh, it's the right to equality. Yeah, very good. Uh, one more question. <laughs> Now, you must have read in the papers, recently more than 100 economists, social scientists and statisticians, they disputed or they questioned the government on the integrity of data that it's been releasing over the last few months. So, what do you know of that? Which are the data actually they were referring to? Sir, the primary reason that the employment data has not been released by the government yeah. and uh, that is uh, one area where a lot of economists have uh, contested. Mm -hmm. uh, Howsoever, the government has also uh, reasoned that uh, the economic data that was come out, uh, that was given by the uh, National Statistics Commission yeah. was also being attested by the Labour Bureau and confirmed once it was released. So there is a little delay but uh, that is what the government's reason. Was that the only uh, data which uh, they cast as persons on, or was there something else also? So there's one more data under Mudra Yoshna, but I am not very clear. No, you are leaving out the main one, the GDP, the revision of GDP, okay, which sir. the present government did, okay, uh, changed the back series numbers, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You studied at Stephens, yes. and Stephens has become an autonomous college now. Um, my current status I'm not aware of it is. So are you aware at all about what is autonomy and what are the advantages, disadvantages, etc. Or I move to another question. Um, Ma'am, since Stephens is demanding uh, an autonomous... No, not demanding, it's become. It's so become more. Then I'll ask further questions, otherwise I'll go to another topic. Um, so that it has freedom when it comes yes. to designing its syllabus yes. and conducting its own examinations. And it was hoping that there would be more quality improvement when it comes to the education delivery on its side. So why do you think that despite the AAA rating, the other colleges have not asked for autonomy? What is the reason? Um, certainly it's about how well they themselves adjust with the delivery. You know, it isn't. It's all about funds. Okay, all right, I'll move to something else. You've done a policy research paper on representation of women in India in recently. So what was this about? You just took some of the advertisements and analyzed them? Um, Ma'am, initially there was some literature search on why it happens, mm -hmm. why it is out of context usually for it. Okay. And then there was an analysis of acts, uh, which is Indecent Representation okay. of Women Act and Cable Television Act for Women in yes. And then there was the uh, the regulatory bodies that exist regarding the particular issue, analysis of where okay, So regarding this particular research paper which you presented, was there any follow-up action by this particular uh, Rakshak Foundation? Now in 2014 it had made a representation to a parliamentary standing committee regarding the same act because there were being amendments proposed to uh, the recent representation. So was anything further done or just a proposal? There was a represent, representation in the parliamentary committee. Nothing else. Yes. Alright. Now you also were editor of the Environmental Society. So did you write articles or you just edited? I wrote and edited. 
you go to? What article did you write? Uh, because mm -hmm. it's a semesterly uh, system for the general as well. So oh, so okay. So this was related to your academic performance. No, uh, mm -hmm. so as in per semester one journal came out from the society. Okay. Right. So I wrote two articles. Mm -hmm. One was the uh, story of the bottled water, and the second was uh, your morning coffee set to get expensive. The okay. first was regarding okay. the climate. So uh, since you're so involved with environment, we also talk in terms of climate change. What exactly is climate change? Climate change is uh, where the average temperature of the earth is increasing steadily. It's only the global, global warming which is included in climate change or something else also. Apart from global warming, there's also environmental degradation that's happening as a result of it. So erratic climate weather conditions in different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So are we doing anything on the international level, on the international front? Uh, certainly, uh, we had the International Solar Alliance being inaugurated when we went for the Paris Climate Change mm -hmm. uh, Conference. Yes. So that was one uh, initiative in your that we took. And plus, we've committed our nationally determined contributions at the international. What are these the, the, the contributions <laughs> that we made? Firstly, we aim to reduce uh, our emissions from the 2005 level by 33 to 35 percent by 2030. Second is to create uh, carbon sinks in the terms of forests. What is carbon sink? Carbon sinks are primarily forests which uh, can absorb carbon dioxide mm -hmm. and offset the emissions that are happening in other places. So we are talking about carbon sinks, but we are debating the Aravalis. Do you see a dichotomy there? What's happening? Certainly there is a move, ma'am, but uh, as the Supreme Court has already yes. put us safe, so uh, that's. So, I mean, that's reaching resolution certainly. All right, good. Now, you studied in Delhi. So, Delhi sees a lot of pollution. What is being done to deal with pollution? First, tell me the causes and then what is being done to deal with this pollution. The causes of pollution in Delhi are wide variety. The okay. first is uh, vehicular pollution, that yes. is the main. Second, there are also thermal power plants in and around Delhi. Thirdly, would be construction dust. Yes. Fourthly would be solid waste mass, uh, burning, mm -hmm. which is happening around this. So these are some of the causes. And uh, we, uh, Delhi has a greatest response action plan uh, according to the air quality index, okay. according to which there were initiatives like uh, uh, odd even that was taken. Uh, now we are proposing uh, uh, stickers of different colors and vehicles. So never mind what we are proposing, what has been done, just mention that. Are you aware of the NGT directions? National Green Tribunal Directions, any of them? Uh, specifically, a ban on vehicles in Trink Delhi. Not as including Delhi, ban on the diesel vehicles which are more than 10 years old in Delhi. Also, a shift with to Bharat Standard 6 now that has been ordered. So, why is there a jump to Bharat 6 from Bharat 4? Why not Bharat 5? There was not much of a difference between 4 and 5. And given the critical situation of climate in Delhi, it was not prudent enough to jump to. All right, thank you. Okay, Minal, uh, you are from Uttarakhand. Yes. Uttarakhand faced some disaster. Yes. So, is Uttarakhand ready now to face the disaster? What What is being done on disaster management in Uttarakhand? Uh, sir, uh, the carrying capacity of many tourist destinations in Uttarakhand has been very limited uh, because uh, one, one of the primary reasons is as well. Uh, Second, a lot of debris uh, because of landslides and mining issue had caused uh, damage during the Kedana tragedy. So, one effort has also been to ban mining uh, near and around uh, that particular area. So, these are some of the issues. So, is there any disaster management, sir? Any government initiative on uh, Managing the disaster in this state. Sir, I'm sorry. You are not aware? Look into that because there is a complete disaster management organization <coughs> which functions in the state. Okay? Uh, public administration. Government came with a uh, slogan that minimum government and maximum governance. So, can you name some schemes? which support this statement. Minimum government, maximum government. Sir, uh, for example, there is a e-filing of tax returns. That is an example of it. 
and uh, there was this e-district scheme as well in Italy, in which a lot of services are being offered online in district, ranging from uh, getting your birth certificates and death certificates. That is also one place. There was this e-district portal regarding uh, single window clearance for business regulations by the government. So these are some issues. There are much more. I think you know, will at least list off some some of the major governments of India flagship schemes which are uh, there to help governance. You understand the difference between government and governance. So would you like to rethink or? Uh, so I should give me a second. Hmm? Um, so specifically, I'm not able to recall. Okay, let's come to. Uh, me Too movement uh, raised a lot of debate. What is your uh, opinion, pros and cons of Me Too movement on society? So the Me Too movement was uh, against sexual harassment at workplace women. It was uh, mostly an online campaign that was run by women uh, in which they came out with their stories of sexual harassment. And the pros of this was Firstly, that the collective support that women got from various quarters regarding their own experiences and the addressal of the issue that previously existed nearly as science networks in the organization. And the second was that uh, the legislative approach that was earlier ensued with respect to sexual harassment was now replaced by how women are treated in the workplace itself, apart from the laws existing and apart from how the grievances are addressed. So to close, and um, the two points were that uh, there were some women who had misused this kind of campaign in terms of uh, falsely accusing certain people. And because the second con was where uh, people were dismissed from their jobs without any uh, investigation preceding it, so that was also one con that I So, what should be done to check the misuse of Me Too? So, when it comes to investigation procedures, the first thing is that uh, the narrative that the woman narrates regarding uh, her experience should be uh, thoroughly investigated by the authorities. And the second is the, the internal complaints committees themselves, which have not been functional in organizations. And if they are properly at place, probably these grievances would not arise. So they need to be constituted. Okay, can you name some account by the foreign travelers to India historically? Who visited India and what kind of India they witnessed? History is your subject. So I want you to go back in time and give me names of the foreign travelers who visited India and their historical account. Slavery. You can name one or two. There, there are a number of foreign uh, travelers. Too. So the first was uh, Ibnu Batuta, which is, uh, he came out uh, during the uh, early uh, rule of the, I'm not able to guess by his plan period, but he came to India during uh, the 12th century probably. And his uh, narration of India was uh, how there are there are wide variety of cultures that are pre-existing in India. And certain uh, criticisms as well regarding the caste system particularly that he analyzed. The second was Frankfurt Bernier, who came to India uh, roughly nearly the same time. And uh, his primary uh, work was to uh, compare the East and the West when it came to the culture, the exclusion that Indian society had, and uh, the rule that the rule uh, of. Okay, last question. What will be the implication of USA pulling out of Afghanistan on India? Um, so, uh, there are a lot of security implications that they can be uh, on India firstly because the presence of the United States of America's army has controlled the, the Taliban terrorist activities. So, in how the Jaish uh, for example, chains are being chained in the Taliban camps, that would be the first repercussion that might occur. Secondly, also because uh, USA is negotiating with Taliban, excluding the Afghan government with which India has good relations. That, that might also be a place where India loses out in its influence in Afghanistan because we do not have good terms with Taliban. Right. Now, Uttarakhand uh, is, has Uttarakhand benefited from separation from UP? 
Uh, yes, sir, to a very large extent. They have. What, has the economy improved? What was it before Adli and what is it now? So there are various parameters on which Uttarakhand has improved. The first thing, for example, electricity that has uh, reached more than 90% of the areas in Uttarakhand right now. Second is uh, also tourism, which has increased 168% uh, in the last 12 years. Uh, third is also uh, industrial areas, which earlier uh, Uttarakhand never attracted because uh, there was no specific focus to the Pahari so areas. So all this would result in a better economy, yes, better economic has. growth? It has. So what is the economic growth now? So it's 6.77% currently. But that's not much. Uh, so our average growth uh, since... UB 6.4, US 6.7, where is the much difference? So since 2012 to 2017, a five year period, uh, our average growth rate was nearly 9-10% as well. So given how much we've grown and right now there's a... So now economy is pretty good, right? Uh, sir, uh, Deterioration, I would not say call it deterioration, but there are certain areas that we need to still address for uh, us to grow sustainably. All right. All right. Now, what about the human development indices of the product? How do they compare with UP? Uh, so, in terms of uh, sex ratio, I even though I do not have an idea about uh, UP, but sex ratios in the Uttarakhand have been uh, better. better obviously. Than yeah. And uh, even literacy rates when it comes to our average literacy rate being around 78% in Uttarakhand. So that is also... Better than the national? Okay. So, uh, so. I know. Okay. <clears throat> what is India's position in human development index among 189 nations? So exactly. Yeah, but... No, 130. Alright. Uh, Uttarakhand, eh, along with the central government, had planned a large number of dams in Uttarakhand. They were planned but not translated into reality. And they are not, not even the foundation has been started. What is the reason? And why it is stuck? So there are two primary reasons with regard to it. First is uh, the wide scale protests that have also been seen regarding hydroelectric power projects. Because it entails a lot of rehabilitation or replacement of people primarily from their uh, So has the uh, government itself stopped it or? Which agency has stopped it? So exactly, I am not aware of Supreme Court Supreme Court has put a temporary ban on it Because it is not satisfied after the Kedarnath disaster Okay About government data It says you better make a proper study ecological all projects are on board. Now, you've done something about the environment. Uh, COP21, that is the Paris Conference, yes. it evolved a concept of INDCs. Yes. Are you aware? Yes. India has uh, set some INDCs for itself. Yes. Can you kindly give the very brief? So the first is to reduce its emission levels from the 2005 level by 33 to 35 percent. Second is to have carbon intensity. Yes. Carbon intensity, yes. right? Yes. Second is 30, uh, 30 to 35 percent of the GDP. Okay. I mean that is the word you should use. GDP. What else? Uh, second is to create additional carbon sinks, about 2.5 to 3 billion tons of carbon dioxide. Correct. And third is with respect to renewable energy, mm -hmm. around uh, 100 gigawatts. No, you're wrong there. 40% okay. of the electricity will be generated from renewable, renewable sources. sources. By which year? 2020. 30. 30. 30. All dates are 30. All right. We close the interview. I give you a little feedback now. Yes. You have done very well. Most of the questions you have been able to handle nicely. Is that any right? Yes, sure. Of course, you will be given a pen drive so you will know where you were not able to answer the questions. We feel that questioning will be the way we have asked questions largely based on your time. Since you are from Uttar, Uttarakhand, yes. that's one area. Second is your hobbies, etc., environment, yeah, feminist issues. So they can ask you questions on that. Third is uh, public administration. Fourth is political science and history. 
these are the broad areas. So the reason that political science and history, I did, I did read them in college, and I've read them in UPSC. Yes. No, I don't know okay. how fine the questions. It's okay. Read up a little, you know, like in history there can be some questions. For instance, what are the turning points in India's history? Did India have a great civilization in the past, right? Like in Golavira, etc. You know that Harappan Golavira, etc. So read up a little. Or the role of Mahatma Gandhi in the Freedom Movement, etc. Social reformers in India. Read up a little, you have got a little time. So, yes, you have to do it. Or political science or public administration, we have asked you a number of questions. That's okay. Uh, then, constitutional uh, principles like basic structure concept. Then, we have Menka Gandhi, due process of law. You know that case? Due yes. process of law. Okay. This is important constitution. Principles in the Rupert And finally, current affairs, which includes important recent judgments of Supreme Court. For instance, privacy, triple talaq, sabri mala, some issues are pending before Supreme Court, Lokpal is pending, NRC is pending. Mm -hmm. Then current issues also you must remember what is happening in Kashmir and what is happening in Northeast. You know, Arunachal Pradesh had a protest. Then there was a protest all over Northeast about the constitutional amendment bill. So what happened? Why was there? These are the areas where I would suggest you should focus your attention. So, and finally, very, very thorough study of newspapers, important in information which comes your way. Don't forget that. Even on the day of interview, you must read newspaper before you enter the interview. Okay. Good luck. You are doing very well. Best of luck. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update.